Oxford had become the centre of Bookman's activities. Each year, between 1930 and 1937, he hired one or more of the colleges for a house party in the summer vacation. In the summer of 1933, 5,000 guests turned up for some part of the event which filled six colleges and lasted 17 days. But it was time to say goodbye to our Oxford friends. We departed by hired coach en route for Sweden via London where we did some sightseeing. Just preparing for the changing of the guard. Oh, to go over there. We also visited the Initiatives of Change Centre. Then on to Harwich where we boarded the boat en route to Denmark and through to Sweden. United States, Australia, Woo! India, Woo! Korea, UK, Japan, Australia, UK, Romania, France, USA, Russia, Russia Senegal, Germany, Moldova, Moldova, Australia, and the UK. We left the coach and our helpful, friendly driver as we joined the boat for the three-hour crossing to Visby, where Swedish colleagues were hosting a three-day conference for people from the region. The two-day journey had been memorable, but not always straightforward. So anyway, we finally found our hostel about one o'clock, past one o'clock last night. But uh, Sweden is beautiful in the, in the moonlight. <laughs> Bookman came here in 1938, 20 years after the Oxford group had formed around his work in England. During that time, many thousands had become involved on every continent. Vast meetings with 30 to 40,000 people took place, impacting many countries including those in the Nordic North. In Visby, at a time when many nations were arming for war, Bookman made his most confrontational speech. He had become very conscious that personal spirituality was not adequate for the challenges that lay ahead. Our travelling group joined about 60 others in that same derelict church where he made this decisive speech and listened to what he had said in 1938. I hope that by the time I finish speaking, some of you will have made a decision. Some have come hoping to be changed. Some of you come here with the hope that you will learn to change others. The danger is that some of you want to stop there. I am tremendously interested in the third point, how to save a crumbling civilization. Then I want to reach the millions of the world. The next step is revolution. It is uncomfortable. I'm not here to make you comfortable. I'm not here to make you like me. I'm going to promise you one thing. I am not turning back. I'm not turning back, no matter who does no matter what it is going to cost. Buchmann's call to save a crumbling civilization signaled the third dimension of the program which had already become known as moral rearmament. 
several of us in the traveling group and those we met in Visby reflected on this challenge to create answers for our communities and our world today. It means that, for example, he said, Bangladesh will go under the water and 150 million people will be displaced. So I was really suddenly challenged. Uh, what am I doing here, listening to the inner voice and how are we going to handle this? We don't even know, we can't take for granted that humankind uh, will be continuing as it has done unless something drastic happens. And that is the difference between our generation and the generations who met here 70 years ago. We had a wide variety of impressions and experiences in Visby. At the final meeting, we passed candles as a symbol of the friendships made during our time together. Next morning, our traveling group reflected on our experiences in Visby and prepared for departure. So I'm very grateful for that, and I, and I think as a team, you know, just our contribution to the, to the spirit and to that search. And funnily enough, our struggle, and then Sally's willingness to address that and to share on that, and, um, you know, it's, it's, all played, it's all played a part. Rather wonderfully, I think. For myself, I need to learn to move quicker in shedding what is not necessary in order to be free to do what is necessary. Um, you know, you, one kind of enjoys sometimes holding on to resentments a little longer just to feel sorry for yourself. The challenge for IFC uh, all over the world is to learn to work in teams again and again and again. And, um, yeah, I think it was Archie who said, yeah, who, who quoted, that no one can be wholly God-controlled who works alone, but it is to a willing group God speaks most clearly. So this is the challenge for us, to work together. How many kids have you got? Three. How would you know? <laughs> I'm videoing this. Okay, okay. I've got three children. Eight, five, four, and one. And where are you from? And I am from Moldova. Do you think it will have any effect on your children, your coming on this? I'm sure this will help me to be a better mother and a better person for the society. Terminal 2, where we leave the party from, is on the right hand side of Terminal 3. You know, it's not far. No, well, it's, well, not. it's from there to there. So. <laughs> After leaving Visby on our way to the conclusion of our journey at Co in Switzerland, we responded to the invitation of our German friends to stop in Freundenstadt, a town in the Black Forest. It was here that Frank Buchmann died in 1961. It was also the place where he was inspired by the thought that the next great movement in the